But Seb, yes. let's get on our first game and our first round of games. I think we should do that. So okay. joining us on the stage, we've got from Creative Assembly, we've got Al Bickham. We've also got Chris Bratt from Eurogamer. We've also got Lionhead, Lionheart X10 as well is going to be joining us as well. Can you welcome to the stage, please? Yes. Come on, guys. Look at all the smoke. Here they come. Welcome, have a seat, guys. Chris. This is your chair. You get to sit in this one. I'm going to move to the arm. What it know. does is it cradles your buttocks in a very nice way. Yes, good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so of course, Chris is from Eurogamer. Yep. Hello. And we have Lionheart X10. Hello. You all know who he is already. <laughs> and then of course we have Al from Creative Assembly. Hi. So guys, you, you're going to show off uh, Total War Warhammer. Yeah. We're going to we're going to me and Seb are going to leave in just a second. Yeah. But just answer me this. Did you have that meeting? Was it, how do we hammer in more war? Was that your conversation? <laughs> we usually ask that question. Uh, finally, Find we've got to a place where we can smack you know, magic into the whole thing and make it super explosive. I'm, so, gonna, yeah. I'm also going to steal uh, Chris's first question, which, which is, wh why so long? Why so long? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, these things take time, oh, I'm going to say. Well, it certainly looks like you've taken a lot of time over it. It looks yeah, awesome. So, we are. Cam, should we leave them to it? Yeah, let's let's shut up our minds and let these guys take over. So, Chris, All right. over to you and All right, cool. Total War Warhammer. Who is playing? Oh, Who is playing? Are we heading up here? Is that right? Oh, yes. Come oh, yeah. up. Well, I, I, think, PC here. I think you want this PC. To be honest, Lionheart, <laughs> you're better than... than <laughs> Lionheart, you're a bit of a... Any of us three. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Sweet. All right, cool. All right. Oh, is Al not joining us for this? Do I come yeah, join you? Get yeah. over here. All right, so there are... There are two options here. We can play it on easy or hard. Yep. How much time have we got? We've got like 20 minutes. Can we? We've got time, I think, to see if Todd can conquer it on hard. I think it's hard. It's <laughs> got to be hard. Here we go. <laughs> All right. I, I thought I was going to sit on this seat. I'm just going just gonna to leave that there. I'm just going to leave that there. I love that we got to enter a room with like smoke coming up and everything. Amazing. I never get to do that. Once in a lifetime oh, opportunity, awesome. right? All right. So we've all played this demo. Mm -hmm. oh, I imagine you played it more than the two of us. I have, and I'm still not. Great at it, as YouTube has told me a couple of times. Yeah, already, so. yeah. Thanks. I, I really enjoyed uh, the demo that we, that we played like a couple of weeks ago now. So it's the dwarves versus the green skins. Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. If people don't know, it's taking place in the underway. What is the underway? So uh, in the campaign game, uh, so Titan War fans will have played, you know, the turn-based campaign game before. We've now got a way for certain races, including dwarves, for example, to enter the dwarf and underway, which is a kind of vast, crumbling ancient network mm -hmm. that the dwarves built. Uh, and it's a way for them to kind of bypass obstacles on the campaign map and zip, you know, zip across the map. But there's Those a chance of them goblins. being... Yes, exactly, yes. Always the goblins, yeah. cheeky little fellows. So they are, you know, ambushing the guys here. This is sure. actually one of the early kind of uh, narrative quest battles for uh, Thorgrim Grudgebearer, who's the high king of the dwarves. There yep. he is on the throne of power there. What I love about uh, Thorgrim Grudgebearer is that his whole thing is he's just really, really angry all the time. Like. He has a big book that he writes everything that he's angry about, exactly. and then he goes out there and tries to solve them. His I, whole, I, I even if he went shopping, I think the whole experience would be predicated on vengeance in yeah. some way, basically. So. Okay, so Lionheart, Total War Expert. <laughs> I'm just going to call you that in full from now on. Uh, what are we thinking in terms of, of setting up for it? Well, we've got quite a, quite a defensive line here. We've got loads of um, artillery, we've got organ guns, right. we've got a flame cannon. So it's very much like a, like a defensive... Um, Sort of standpoint for the for the dwarves here, and you've got all these troops coming in from various directions, coming in from the flanks and from the rear at various points. Yep. There's loads of like horrendous monsters coming out. An arachnorock, huge spider. Mm -hmm. I think a giant shows up there on some trolls. So um, I'm gonna try and you know just hold the line okay. and uh, see what happens basically. Yeah. What I really enjoyed about this demo when I played it originally was that it it does let you just kind of stand and hold the ground. It's yeah. an ambush. The goblins are just charging at you. I love that it's at the, the end of a massive tunnel, so you see them coming all the way along. Yeah. And yeah. then whilst that's happening, these little bits on the side—I'm not sure if you can see it on the mini-map—but there are these little little pockets where uh, where smaller ambushes come that's from, right. as if one ambush wasn't enough. Yeah. And, and, and then your successive. lines just go terrible. Like yeah. it, you you were you were perfectly prepared for the the first main force, and then and then suddenly everything goes wrong. Yeah. It's all about really. Um, Keep it, holding the line while you keep the guns firing, and that's what the dwarves do. Their melee units are very tough, they have really high morale, sure. so you know you want them to come at you and, and, and just kind of hit your front line, and you want those guns and, and crossbowmen and riflemen to just keep on firing. Sure. So are you, are you going to have infantry in like one line 
Yeah, yeah I'm just gonna, gonna, just gonna try and hold them back. Okay. Smash them with the organ guns oh, and can cannons. We, can we zoom in on those guys for a second at the back? Slayers. Look at yeah, them. Their haircut. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> the kind of... When, when the bad monsters turn up, when the big things turn up, in fact, they've got a trait which is called anti-large, which I'm a huge fan of that. It's like Warhammer lingo at its best. Okay, nearly right, ready now. Yeah. Slayers are fun, they're kind of... Their whole, their whole ethos is, is, is sort of... I am going to go and find the biggest, nastiest monster I can fight, and hopefully I'll, do, I'll die. If it doesn't yeah. die, I'll die a heroic death in right? battle. Yeah. Okay. Crack on, boys. Yeah. Yep. Let's yeah. do it. All right. So, what do you think in terms of the heroes here? Because this is kind of new for for Warhammer. So, all the Total War games have had generals in the past, but this is one of the first times I felt really comfortable actually getting them stuck in and their individual units as well yeah, yeah. They're, they're meant to be like right in the middle of the, yeah, the, totally the, the different hit point system as well Ooh, that you've got yeah, here so they're right. a, lot, a lot tougher um, yeah it sort of represented almost like a, a unit um, the unit's numbers in the bottom it almost like it's got a health bar that you can very clearly see when things are yeah. going bad yeah I Definitely. mean you know we're, we're, we want to do the justice to the tabletop game so heroes get stuck in that's what they do they're, they're heroes they're kings they're lords sure. because they're fighters you know they're risen to all right, the ranks so kind of thing. the first kind of mini ambush is taking place yep. here, which is like, is. is it mainly like goblin spearmen and a few archers of them? Yeah, there? goblin spearmen and archers, oh, they're, they're pretty, professional. pretty small fry, but they, um, you know, you get enough waves of them coming in. Yeah, so you're going you've first got, person on the organ gun there. So this is, um, this, you can do this with a few units, right, as well as the organ gun, there's also like the gyrocopters you can mess around with, the doom divers if you're green skins. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, lots is that... Is the reason for that just because you think it's going to be a bit more fun? Like, yeah, to, I mean, uh, these 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 are all the units that appear in the in the Warhammer rule books, right? So, so. Oh no, sorry, I meant the actually going into first person. Like, oh, I is see. That just because you want, you think it looks cool. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for some, it's kind of fun to use a cannon or something like that in first person mode. But half the time, if you just want to soak up the scenery, then you can choose a unit like the gyrocopters. We should look at those later, actually, when yeah. they get the reinforcements yeah, yeah. coming. Oh yeah, we should yeah. point out that um, if we held it long enough. Yeah, we get a couple of units of gyrocopters, which are like dwarven helicopters with some bombs. Basically, yeah, bombs strapped to the yeah. wings. They don't get rid. Of, dwarves don't really get cavalry, so mm. they, they don't get like you know a, a, a you know a useful kind of fast-moving flanking unit like uh, like a lot of the other races do. So they get gyrocopters, which means they can, as long as they're not you know too peppered with arrows, they will fall to that. But they're really good at zipping around the battlefield. And just pumping good well. fire at various things. So Lionheart has done a great job proving what I was talking about before. It's like you had your lines so perfectly yeah. set up. It was all so neat and lovely. And then like you're all over the place now. Although doing a pretty good job. Yeah, a much better job than when I played it. <laughs> holding them back for now. Um, just waiting for the kind of the next round, the next wave to come through. We've got them forming up over on the left here. Right. Yeah. So took some damage with the thunderers. Is that right? Yeah. They got caught out by those um, the spider riders. They just charged on in. They're really yeah. they're really good at picking off and like going for trying to get your your cannons early on in this. Yeah. Is, yeah. is that is is there a new system in play there in in Warhammer in particular? Like that. It does seem that um, the AI. For, I remember in the, the video that you uploaded, actually, you got hit on the flanks. Oh, I totally got flanked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is, is this new to Warhammer or is it was it just a a good example of something that's already been no, happening. Not really. I mean, we, we work on the AI with every game we do. It's it's uh, the open, open field battle stuff we're really happy with at the moment, as you saw from the. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll see flanks. It will spot opportunities. If Lion had, you know, maybe a couple of blocks of troops lined yeah. up on the front with a gap between, every chance that some of those spiders would have tried and threaded their way through the gap to get to the guns, because the AI knows those guns are the strength of this army, and it sure. should. It, it's going to be trying to take them out. You know. One thing I kind of like about the the dwarves in particular as well is that. Their range units aren't that squishy. Like some of them can actually fight in melee relatively well, yep. which is is pretty new. So just there, like some of the quarrelers, which are the the, the crossbow units, mm -hmm. they're hit by spiders. There, they should be able to, you know, hold their own yeah. and defend uh, against those guys. Oh, you timed that perfectly. The there. <laughs> yeah, that was Perfect. very good. Alan went like, I think uh, Lion here is doing a slightly better job at demoing this than either of us ever, yeah. ever would have managed. Absolutely, yeah. To, my, yeah. to, my turn, to our eternal shame. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so how far away is the main force away now? They're, they're about halfway down the tunnel. About halfway down, yeah. This is the thing, and then suddenly a giant. Giant. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> you, you're trying to concentrate on the main force, yeah. and then yeah. that turns up. Now, this is Slayer's a custom build to kill these guys. As you pointed out, yep. they've got anti large as a. As They'll a... still take some pretty, like, immediately uh, getting knocked back in, in big yeah. numbers there. They're going to take some damage anyway. Yeah, they will. They will, they will take some damage. So, oh. some of them are going <laughs> to fulfill their kind of 
wish to die at the hands of something large. Yeah, I think uh, lions do the honourable thing here. It's giving them the opportunity yeah, to fulfil their themselves. destiny. Sure. Yeah. Armour piercing is probably, you know, I think I think it's really important in Total War Warhammer as well because because of the variance uh, of values in unit stats and sure. things like that. Armour things like armour piercing become so important. Because when you've got like an Arachnarok, the giant spider thing marching towards in the distance, mm -hmm. it's covered in it's a thick armor plate. So nice. getting your armor piercing units on that is going to be really, really important. Oh, Make, okay. Making those matchups. Hey. Let's hey. Slayers, is, ladies is, and gentlemen, is, slayers. His belly wobbles when he falls over. Yeah. <laughs> we need to highlight that. <laughs> and the trolls are gone as well. So yeah, good job. Uh, kind of. I think you're pretty much set for the main force now, right? I think so. Although Thorgrim's. Yeah. Thorgrim's in trouble. Oh, you've got potion of healing, right? You've got a health potion. Oh, no, it's yeah. already used. I've used my health potion. Oh, no. Thorgrim might go down. Oh, no. Thorgrim, get out of there. So, last time you played, I don't think he had it, but he's now got a magic fireball uh, ring. He's got the fire ring of Thorio, which yep. is a dwarf yeah, and rune ring. This is new. Oh, God. I this think is... you can use that range or. It's this is up. freaking me out, Lane. Run, 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 run. <laughs> oh, God. He's fine, he's fine. Ah! I've okay, got, okay. I've got him. He's fine. That was, that pull the was, chair back, pull the chair back. You, you cannot know, lose the Great Book of Grudges. No. You cannot. <laughs> Can you not pick that up at Smith's? I like the idea that some trolls would be <laughs> going copies. around with it from that point onwards. Writing yeah. their own little messages in there. Yeah. Scrolling like yeah. Okay, he survived. Good job, man. Good job. So, yeah. the thing about Thorgrim, right, is that if he dies in this battle, it's bad. It's pretty bad. Like, your, your entire army's going to freak out about that. Yep. But it's not... A proper death, like because he is the core character, he's the leader of the dwarves. Yeah, you're okay for the rest of the campaign, right? Yeah. So the, the legendary laws, the, the guys that are the, oh, the head years. of your the head of your campaign. Yeah, if they fall in battle, um, they basically take horrific wounds and then go and convalesce for a while, and then they come back into. So campaign. oh, is it like a timeout? The, yeah, the, basically. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what the timeout is, but you know, after sure. a period, he'll come back in and he'll be able to pick up from where he left off. How's it going with the uh, the giant spider there? Uh, not too good at the moment. Yeah, okay. uh, I've, I've just realised I've got some troops that were pushing up for that first force back. So, oh, yeah, they so can the main back force now. now just pressed in, but in come the Slayers. So, uh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah slayers. that's good. Nice. I, there's a much greater sense of impact in Total War Warhammer, yeah. um, I think. just And you absolutely freaking need it when there are enemies like that. Yeah. You need them to hit things and... People need to fall over as a result. Absolutely, and get, get thrown around. So yeah. many of these big monsters have big AOE attacks. Yep. So. And the, lead, the, the heroes as well. Like you see Grimgor Ironhide, you know, the big, uh, the, the big orc here, yep. the legendary lord. He goes in, so has one swipe of his axe, and he'll just knock guys by. Okay, so the. Great. Oh no, the reinforcements. Have they turned up yet? Yeah, they're they're the oh yeah, they're the other way. So they come with a couple of sets of bombs each, which uh, is quite nice. You get to hop them over infantry usually and drop them. Yeah. And Try and get a big group. Seems exactly, to be the, yeah. the tactic there. You drop a couple of clusters of those, and you can, you know, you can totally freak out some enemy, enemy infantry and kill a few as well. Sure, sure, sure. So yeah, there's a that, that looks like a decent group. There we are, nicely lined up. Very nice, very nice. Uh, oh, you perfectionist, you. Bombs away. <laughs> nicely done. So how good are the gyrocopters outside of that? So you can see they're wavering already. Like that, did yeah. a real morale hit on them. So okay, yeah. So did, like as well as doing damage, you're yeah. Having bombs dropped on you by dwarf, dwarfs in helicopters is a pretty scary yes, thing. It's slightly unsettling. Nice. Is there any advantage to going in first person? Like, are to, you to more accurate? Extent, yeah, to some extent. Um, I mean, there's, there's, you know, there's a. According to their shooting abilities, they will hit or miss. You know, right. and according to the targets moving and various other variables as well. So you know, you can calculate if something's moving along, you can fire there. Um, so there, there is a, there is an element of skill to it, and you can get you know you personally get better at it as well. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Um, but as, as, again, as much as that, it's 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 a fun way of viewing the battle, yeah. like seeing it in that view. Oh, this is great. Oh, big ones. Oh man. Was that a melee attack with that the giant? Yep. I didn't even Jericopters. realize that was a thing. Just gone in like mowed them Amazing. down. <laughs> That's really cool. I um, when I was playing it, I just kept them. I I was very precious about them because yeah. they looked nice. So I just kept them back with range attacks all the time. That looked impressive. Just on watching them swoop on in and got also, the Also, you know down. you've won now, so it's time to show off with that stuff. That's yeah. understandable. <laughs> got them down. Yeah. Thorgrim's just alive. <laughs> yeah, that was that was the we'll one on moment in this demo where I thought you up. might you might uh, surfer. I was that worried. Was, that was good. <laughs> I couldn't get my uh, my ring to fire. I was pressing right click instead of left click. I'm like, oh. all right. Well, yeah. 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 That was excellent. Job done. 
Yeah. Big round of applause for Lionheart, please. Thank you. Yeah, we, we definitely made the right call there. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I don't know how long we've got left yet, uh, but we may as well talk a little bit about where, where does this battle fit into the, the game itself? So if you play so, as dwarves. Yeah, so if you play, if you play against the dwarves and you know, you're using Thorgrim as your, as your legendary lord for that campaign, you'll, um, at the start of each campaign, you get this thing called the Prelude, which is like an, it's almost a tutorial, but it leads you narratively through several okay. battles and stages in the early part of the campaign game before kind of pushing you out into the sandbox of the, of the campaign sure. to kind of, you know, carry on for yourself. So, um, nice. and this is, this is quite a very early... <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me avoid this. Um, so yeah, this is quite an early, uh, early battle for, for Thorgrim. And actually what we've done here, we've thrown a lot more units than you would normally have at this point in the game in because... Um, you want to show off. Exactly, there's okay. all this cool stuff the dwarves have. And if we just showed you the basic unit roster, I don't think it'd be that you know, be, be, be as interesting as, as it is here, so. Sure. But yeah, just uh, Thorgrim. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't Enumerating look, the he grudges. He doesn't look that happy, does he? Considering he's just... He's, he's, he's quite just frowning. Quite yeah. frowning. Or, so maybe it's because... One grudge one, isn't it? so but, guess, uh, yeah, yeah, he's still got plenty left. And maybe because you almost got him killed by a bunch of trolls. Yeah, he might be, he might be a little bit miffed. Yeah. But you cannot take issue with that beard, can you? Yeah. Look, at, look at the plats. I'm not sure if people heard it, but plats. when the, uh, the battle starts, I think he says... <laughs> Is it my my beard itches with trouble? Beard itches the trouble. Yeah, yeah. He's a proper dwarf, isn't he? He is. He doesn't mess around. And uh, I actually, I think, did you get the killing blow with, with the uh, I think I was the cannon? Guns, yeah. Yeah, that was that was awesome. You man, you demo very well. Thank you very much. That was that was good. <laughs> yeah, I thought I played this pretty well. I was really smug when I uh, we did the preview of this for Eurogamer, and I went in straight straight on hard, thinking, you know. I knew I how to play total. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. now I'm feeling like that maybe wasn't quite as good <laughs> as, as I thought it Actually, was. Actually, there's a really cool bit of scenery. If you head straight up the battlefield line, yep. over here, there's this fallen dwarf oh, statue nice. with all these kind of goblin uh, like there's scaffolding around it, like they've been chipping bits off it and giggling and running away with some There's another bit like directly behind this as well, I think, where um, you can see like the goblins have started yeah, to claim these bits. Yeah, which yeah. is. It, like from a law perspective, it creates a nice little touch because you feel like you're trying to win back your yeah your own homeland. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. From the but they've uh, made a right mess of, quite frankly. Like all the extra bits off from well, the scenery-wise on yeah. the ground, because it's the first time we've seen Total War in a subterranean environment, and there's just so much to it. We've yeah. got these waterfalls and other bridges. Yeah, we're working really hard on the environments. You know. When when did development start for Total War Warhammer? It's been in quite a while, right? I think it was 2012, actually. 2012, right. Because yeah, that's when we. I think it was 2012 when we um, when we basically signed a deal with Games Workshop to make sure. the game, and then um, since then, yeah, it's just been you know the team's been getting bigger and bigger, and and we're just we're ramping into full production. We're just coming up on Alpha now. So um, how how did you find that going for a costly victory, by the way? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's my loss good. as well. Okay, half. Yeah, that's yeah, alright. Cool. Yeah, pretty much wiped out. Take that. Oh, oh we sorry, I right, we've done a terrible job of demoing this actually, I take it all back. We haven't pointed out the most important thing about the Total War Warhammer demo. The magic. The magic and also the the, the goblin leader is called Nobnails Backbiter, <laughs> which is it's just brilliant. Like yeah. I, I need to ask. Who made that name? Because I is, does that come from Warhammer lore itself, or is I, that? I don't know with that guy. I don't know. He, he might be one of the lords we've generated. It, it feels sure generated. Said, yeah. It feels like funny goblin words. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's it's see what you can come up together. with, and just yeah. keep pressing random until you get knob nails back by yeah. <laughs> which is uh, yeah, which is excellent. So, uh, yeah, so we didn't really we didn't really see much of him in action in the battle, but he's he's a spellcaster. He was riding around on a wolf, uh, so he kind of runs up and he's got a couple of spells. One called Night Shroud. Which is a debuff to ranged units. He's also um, got the big fireball yeah, thingy that kind of curse of Godadmoon, which nice. is yeah, can be horrific, can just sail off into the distance. And yeah, not that's do the any great thing, right? You you cast it somewhere and then it it just it goes, goes where it wants. Walk. Yeah, it goes walkies. Yeah, according to the whims of the yeah, that's, uh, uh, the winds of magic. Yeah, that sounds so. fun or or just devastating. Yeah, <laughs> depending on <laughs> and it can be. Run. If it tears through your gun line, that, that I mean, it is horrible. Like your guys are getting thrown around the front and centre and routing, and yeah, it's, so, it can be I, bad. I don't think we 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 haven't really talked about the magic that much, really, but just because obviously the, the dwarfs aren't using it here, and um, well, I think Nobdale's just died somewhere in the background. Yeah, he's got hit by a stray organ gun. Yeah, yeah, quite possibly. Could, could have well have done. Yeah. Uh, so like, the first trailer or the first gameplay, sorry, that you showed for Total Warhammer, that the magic looks so powerful, so consequential, like. 
Well, well, was that a fair reflection of what it's like in the game itself? Because I think some people are worried that maybe it will be too powerful. Yeah, too, like, too consequential. Yeah, that's that. I, I can see why that would be a worry. Like, it's 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 balanced effectively because your spellcasters um, have access to the winds of magic. That is their their kind of resource pool. Sure. So you go into a battle and. That the winds of magic might be blowing quite weakly during that battle, so it'll ebb like, Is that like slowly a dice upwards. Roll? Yeah, there's a random element to it, but there's also where you are in the world makes a okay. difference as well. So, so certain parts of the world, uh, like up north in the chaos wastes, where where the winds of magic it's rage a lot bad. harder. Yeah, so there's there's more there's more chance of going in with a heightened level of, of, of magic. But then individual spellcasters' skills, you know, they'll have abilities in their skill trees that'll buff their abilities. You know, when it, when it comes to the management of Winds of Magic, so they might get a faster recharge of Winds of Magic or more starting magic. So, so there's variables to that. So not every fight's going to be the same as the, that, the Battle of Blackfire past. No, that we saw no, that's, of that was, that was kind of all things. singing, all dancing, like yeah. lots of stuff going You're on. You're showing off once. again. There's yeah. a lot of this. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but there's, there's, you know, it, what it does represent is when, when things go right in magic, I yeah. suppose. So, a, you know, a well placed spell can, 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 can answer the course of a battle, but. You've got to bear in mind as well that, like, like we were talking about with uh, uh, Curse of the Bad Moon, it can wander off and it might just not hit anything. You sure. might just not get it on target, and it might be. And then you burn actually quite a lot of your yeah, yeah, your, yeah. your winds of magic, and there'll be a refresh time to that spell. Okay. And bigger spells have a big refresh time, and there'll also be you know a big. Uh, it'll use up a lot of magic to, right. to cast that, that spell. That is reassuring to hear. I think there are there are balancing factors all yeah. throughout it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you might. You yeah, might get, you I might get look some of the units again in like more detail because I, I don't know which ones we we really had a proper look at. We saw, we we were impressed by the Slayers yeah. by Fulgrim himself, and oh no, oh no, oh no, <laughs> they're back. Yeah. We can't play anymore. <laughs> were it so easy to just end war by showing up? I know. Oh, no, I know. Do you want to hit escape when the yeah. tutorial comes up? Sorry. Oh yeah, uh, it looks awesome. I, I mean, do you, how how much have you wanted to have you know total fantasy in this like? Say, sorry, say again. Total fantasy. Like, is this is this being just like the constant dream of uh, Creative Seven? Yeah, totally. Yeah, we've always we've always to toyed with the idea of doing a fantasy game. Yeah. Um, we've always, obviously, been, you know, we've we've kind of nailed our colours to the flag of history for so many years. But really, it's You're still doing that, right? Yeah, we're, okay. we're totally still doing that, by the way. Yeah. Good. Um, Good. <laughs> but. It just, you know, having the Warhammer universe to play with is amazing because it's, it, it unshackles so much of what we want to do with environments and um, crazy weapons and magic and you know, it's all this good stuff and everyone's having a real blast making it as well. It's really, it's really good. Like, it's a pure joy. Well, Chris, I, I know it's probably too early to give a definite review of the game, sure. but like 10 out of 10, 9, 10? I mean, th this I mean, demo... I know you don't give 10s. Uh, like, yeah, uh, so your game's policy is to, you know, review scores. Oh, absolutely yeah, not. No, um, yeah. Absolutely. I, I think this demo is some of the, the most fun I've had with Total War. Most uh, fun ever. And I hope, most fun I hope ever. the rest of the game is as good. Chris Pratt of Eurogamer. So, those are some of the words I said. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, it's on record. And Lionheart, what, what are you making of it so far? It's definitely a, a fantastic different direction for Total War to go after so many historical battles. Yeah. Um, it's just great to come up against huge monsters, and dwarves are awesome. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that's ever been in question. No. Yeah. They are awesome. Yeah. Your review is better. Thank you. <laughs> much, much better. Much yeah. more thorough. Yeah. All right, well, thank you, guys. Thank you, cool. crowd. Thanks uh, to Creative Assembly, to Al, to Lionheart as well, and, of course, to Chris, who gave it 10 out of 10. No, that's not true. Didn't, that's not true. <laughs> not true. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, yeah, cool. So, Cam, what, like, what, what else have we got here? Like, I think that was one uh, game. I don't, know, I don't know how we follow most fun ever. Most fun ever.